What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today, Prey. In science, there's a theoretical term called the butterfly effect. This is used to describe the fact that small actions can have major consequences. If you walk down one hallway, you may end up running into horrible aliens, while a different path could lead to you having a peaceful afternoon. What if the change that happens is slightly bigger though? You know, something like if President John F. Kennedy wasn't assassinated in 1963. That means he'd be alive to spend more money on space travel and thus, make it so we reach beyond the stars sooner. It's in this futuristic alternative reality where Prey takes place, and yet, it's really not as wonderful as it first seems. Our hero, Morgan Yu, is a man caught in the worst day ever when he wakes up to find out that he's lost his memory, his sense of direction, and maybe his mind. Discovering just what's truly going on in this damaged station means searching the empty hallways for answers to your own past. It turns out that Yu agreed to play the main role in a series of dangerous experiments that would combine alien shapeshifter DNA with him. This was supposed to unlock the secrets of the brain, making it so that anyone could master the piano in 10 minutes or immediately understand another language. If this had been successful, it would have forever revolutionized our society. Somehow though, things clearly went very badly, and now we're the only person left to try and sort this mess out. In many ways, this game is almost an epic sequel to Bioshock. We carry a giant wrench, a mysterious voice tells us where to go, and there's interesting moral questions at the heart of the story. While on the surface, it looks like another stylish first-person shooter, what makes it different is the guns and abilities we can use. Since we have crazy extraterrestrial genetics coded into our blood, we get access to some amazing skills. Have you ever wanted to blow up someone's head with your thoughts, move objects from across the room, or transform yourself into a con? coffee cup. Well now you can, but I should warn you, these powers have a terrible cost. The aliens that have gotten loose are called the Typhon, and they're actually incredibly smart despite appearing as just blobs of shadow. As you progress through Prey, you can scan their bodies and determine how each one fights. Learning more about them opens up special talent trees where Morgan can alter his own body to have similar alien gifts. Doing this means you can become super, super strong, and the Typhon don't like that. These creatures have evolved a self-defense mechanism that knows if a human is trying to copy their species, and they work even harder to destroy you. The ship itself will also begin to see you as an outsider and turn its automated machine guns against us, making exploration a lot tougher. This decision to choose whether to become an alien or not is just one of many complicated spots we get put in during our adventure. Prey is built around the concept that life is full of branching paths, and once you pick one, you can often never go back. The underlying theme is definitely beware the butterfly effect. Be prepared to deal with the consequences consequences of your actions. There are seriously moments that you might instantly regret because they can't be undone and you know they'll cause you trouble later. For example, at one point I was running through a lab and I saw a guy locked in a test chamber. He was begging me to set him free and he promised that if I opened the door he'd give me the password to a nearby room full of ammo that I really needed. It seemed like the right choice so I let him out, but once he escaped I read in a computer that he was a prisoner from Earth who was insane and kidnapped women. Which was the correct option there? Should I have killed him myself so the aliens didn't eat him and multiply, or did he deserve his own chance at freedom? The conflict you feel inside is what made this game so intriguing to me, and the struggles cross over to the combat as well. In any encounter, we have hundreds of ways to handle the situation. Let's say I spot a huge floating brain that's mind-controlling a group of people like zombie slaves. I could freeze the Typhon and shatter it with my shotgun, lay landmines on the ground and try and lure it into a trap or attempt something a little more creative. On my first playthrough, I put all my upgrade points into engineering so I could repair the random technology I found. Using those skills, I fixed a broken machine gun turret and placed it outside in the hallway and let it blast everyone into gooey chunks for me. It's so awesome beating a project that trusts the player to figure out complex problems on their own without being told what to do. Instead of ever showing you what should be done, Prey teaches you how things can be done, which I really loved. When I'm floating through a damaged section of the space station in zero gravity and throwing fuel canisters to distract enemies, or I'm trapped in a dance club that's jamming out loud music that's attracting monsters, I never felt overwhelmed. It expertly prepares you for whatever you might deal with. All that being said, I do think this game is lacking a bit in depth. I wish we got to battle more kinds of aliens or the rarer ones would actually show up more often. The puzzles are also a bit basic. You spend a lot of time just looking for keycards. These are really small gripes though that didn't take away from the overall experience. 
What did annoy the absolute hell out of me though were these loading screens. Each one takes over a minute in length, and when you're going back and forth between areas trying to take care of side quests, that can feel like an eternity. Why in the world would you make traveling break the immersion so much? Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's head over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Prey an 8.5 out of 10. If you're an ultra hardcore fan of Bioshock or stuff like Dishonored, this game is going to be a treat. Those of you who are just looking for a strange first person shooter to enjoy, you're definitely going to want to pick this up. Just be ready to hide under some desks and terrifyingly reload your weapons with shaking hands. Thanks so much for watching gamers, this has been Dreamcast Guy with another review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. This game surprisingly makes recycling super fun. I'm gonna go recycle this Red Bull right now. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm gonna come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.